Welcome back, everyone, to the F Fire Rises mod for Hearts of Iron 4. I'm your host, Mr. Germany Lover, but apparently, um, someone won the election. Interesting news out of the U.S., as uh, this Joe this Joe guy has been declared winner of the 2020 presidential election. Many established political pundits and scientists have voiced that Trump's loss was something not to be surprised with, citing the multitude of obstacles that the Trump campaign needed to overcome in order to win. Congress has completed the count of the votes as announced that Biden has confirmed victory of the 2020 election and will become the next president. Interestingly enough, the Trump campaign has voiced strong opposition as contested the results of the election, citing voting irregularities and other issues. Alongside the Trump campaign, many top members of the Republican Party have raised concerns about mass voter fraud. Congressional staff have already announced that the claims of irregularities by the Trump campaign are not concurrent with their own findings during the vote count. It seems that the political bickering has gripped America during election season, which will not be going any anywhere anytime soon. Has normalcy finally returned? I really wonder, I don't know when I'm recording this, but like at the bottom of the video, is there something about COVID, COVID-19? Um, I mean, we're still in the first semester, but I've been demonetized, it doesn't even really matter. If I get another strike, my job's completely gone. Um, but like, about the 2020 elections, it's been four years since then. Three years, four years, I don't know, it's been a long time. Hey, regardless, uh, we're having fun, we're trying to get the AFD now in party um, for Germany. We're doing energy autarky. Germany is famous as a major global exporter of cars and machine tools. It's also an export of electricity to several different countries. <clears throat> um, however, it caused quite a strain on ourselves, and because of that, we have no choice but to severely limit, if not completely cut off, our energy exports. Our importers may not be happy, but we'd rather have that than our citizens live in the cold dark. So, we'll modify our Volkswirtschaft. Basically, it'd be better. We'll get Savior Scraps, which I do want to see what that's like. Uh, right now, our party popularity is only 22%. Not very good, but, you know, we're doing it in another direction. Uh, let's see, Burmese military coup, as well as a uh, mass protest in Russia. Upheaval tr thrashes Russia today as a massive number of protests have struck major Russian cities, including the capital city of Moscow. Led by anti-corruption activist Alexei Navalny, the protests are a collaboration of liberal-minded reformers, students, urban professionals, and others who have banded together in opposition to the Putin administration. Activists are calling for greater government transparency, a renewed fight against corruption, demands for renewed or reduced police heavy-headedness, and related to liberal democratic reforms. Russian law enforcement has responded in their typical manner, with many arrests and the use of force being used against protesters. No comments have been made or given by the Kremlin or other state institutions, other than a few representatives in the Duma condemning the protests as being backed by the Western intelligence and other traitors. NATO and U.S. officials have officially denounced a response by the, many, by the Russian government as repressive and violently autocratic. Many analysts in the West have expressed optimism for the continued efforts of pro-democracy activists in Russia, but many point to the consolidation of power of that Putin, his party, and the security forces have on the Russian state that will make meaningful change almost impossible. And a little bit of a coup here, too. Ooh, we need more resources, don't we? Uh, a scattered reports across the Union of Myanmar military action have finally been confirmed. An official statement has been made by the Myanmar Armed Forces, assuring the role of the ousting the former civilian government of the nation and placing the nation under martial law. Cool. Well, maybe not cool for the people. The takeover to see wide international backlash for many powers perceived to be a shaky justification for the coup. The recent election in the nation provided a landslide victory for the former head of the state, Su Kyi, and her pro-China party, the National League for Democracy, and what the new de facto head of the state, Min Aung Hlaing, and the Myanmar Armed Forces have stated a rigged election. Siu Qi has been placed under arrest in the chaos and awaits a soon-to-be trial under a military tribunal. Protests have erupted across the nation in response to, what many is, to many, a simple grab for power by a runaway armed force. Supporters of the coup refer to this as a mere noise caused by paid troublemakers. Some point of foreign powers as responsible for either side's actions, though as of yet, without any substantial evidence. The international community, though giving much wordplay to this situation that holds little in terms of action against the current state of affairs, and nothing seems in the path of General Hilang and the armed forces in finishing the consolidation of power. All that remains to be answered, who will the Uyunt decide with on the global stage? We'll, we'll see how this goes. So after this one, a final Nord Stream decision, expand the Wilhelmshaven the refineries, which is not bad, revive the German coal industry, we need more support for the Bundesdag, so we gotta wait for the election, which will happen this year. North Sea oil expeditions, uh, that seems pretty good to do eventually, revitalize the autobahns, um, or every modernization, so federalization's okay, but we're not really going down that route for this one. Um, I think I might want to revitalize Autobahns, that'll help our business value factor, which would be good, more stability always helps. The Autobahns are so frequently used that the maintenance is, maintenance is hard, but the complex in Asia and America, thus goods are flowing out of the moment. Let's take this intermission to replace and perhaps widen the Autobahns, a few new ones may not hurt either. Yeah, because right now we are actually in a deficit, which is not good. Um, where's our debt? Oh, well, look at all this stuff that we can do. Because our inflation is actually really, really bad due to, uh, you know, monthly inflation. Uh, but consumer goods factor, oh, it's really bad. Broken arrow. Wait, economic actions. 
Call upon every cast plane available to divert and assist a unit on the verge of total annihilation by the enemy. Tactic broken. Oh. Was there an update? There might have been an update. Uh oh. Quantitative easing. More growth, but more inflation. I don't want that. So right now, because we're losing quite a few billions every month. Not ideal. Um, let's do it with that one. What is this? Yeah, we'll lose some stability for that. But that's right. And we're doing revitalized industry right now anyways. What is this? Save your scraps. Modify consumer goods factors. Well, we do want to build as much as we can. Because this should, in theory, give us a little bit of money. But we'll see. Ew, nominal GDP. Real GDP, not good. Very bad. What's costing us the most? Time to keep social spending. Well, can we cut stuff from social spending? Social laws. Political power. Free secondary tertiary education. Proportionate representation. Overrepresentation. Equal rights. Female empowerment. That's not going to help us with money, though. Mass rehabilitation. I like where we're at for that. Liberal security. Moderate security. How about we have less security? That's not going to help us out that much, though. Mass consumerism. Free trade. Um, it's not have heavy sanctions. This would hurt us a little bit, but give more resources to market. Import economy. High taxes. We might go to extreme taxes. There's our fuel gain for oil. And civilian factory construction speed and office park construction. But this gives us a little bit more money. I hate to do this, but I kind of want to see what happens. You know, this is our kind of a test run to see what happens overall in this campaign. Gives a little bit more money overall, but Minamar descends into civil war. Oh, good. And Minamar is up in full-blown civil war just weeks after the military, led by Senior General Min Hong Yang, also the democratically elected government. A rapid escalation of violence has resulted in clashes between the military junta and armed resistance groups across the country. Oh, wow, they really exploded. In the wake of the February 2021 coup, widespread protests erupted against the junta. As dissent intensified, various ethnic armed groups and the newly formed National Unity Government, NUG, began organizing armed resistance. Reports indicate tense, intense fighting in several regions, with the Tam da, uh, Tamada engaged in fierce battles against rebels determined to reclaim control. Civilians found themselves caught in the crossfire, with thousands of fleeing their homes in search of safety. Humanitarian organizations are raising alarms about a potential crisis as access to the essential resources and services becomes increasingly limited. <clears throat> While well, the situation deteriorating, the prospect for peace in Myanmar arose increasingly bleak, leaving the nation to enter an uncertain future. One thing is certain, though. Uh, regardless of outcome, the struggle will continue to, until the last man standing. Tragic. It seems like we should probably go this way. Base war support. Invite Russian businesses. Gehad Shodas. Anti-Russian boat work. Integrate American air bases. They're not really calling for European unity. If anything, we're Euro skeptic in this campaign. Separatism. And claim anti Russian sentiment. But Volk Europa. Aid Ukraine is definitely the route that would probably be taken, so we could go this route. Balkan diplomacy. I don't necessarily want him here. Set an American policy. Caucasian diplomacy. We're still German. Deals. So we think of German militarism. Well, 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 we get there when we get there. We got other things to do. Depression recovery. Ah. Defend the minds of the youth. We could. Bolster the BFV. Well, if anything, we're going to reconcile the parties. Uh, let's go with that one. Next. Halt Nord Stream 2. Nord Stream 2 was supposed to be the second pipeline from Russia to Germany, supplying us with natural gas. Look at that. Uh, but the current, given the current situation, or diplomatic situation, it's no longer an acceptable arrangement. It's time to pay the crews and leave the project dead in the water. After weeks of political chaos in the uh, Republic of the Congo, as a result of the refugee crisis caused by the Third Congo War, it seems President Nugeso, Congolese Party of Labor, has attempted a self-coup, attempting to expand executive power in the face of a refugee crisis that threatens to rip the nation apart. As the former director, or dictator, of the Popular Republic of the Congo uh, announced the reestablishment of the state almost 30 years after its decline, opposition forces and protesters clashed with military police in the capital. With the chaos unfolding in the capital, opposition leaders in the north vowed to restore democracy, whatever the price may be. It seems that now the fate of the two Congos are linked, and a horrible situation in Central Africa has escalated tremendously, with millions of innocents being pulled into conflict that they did not ask for. The Congo crisis expands. Well, usually most of the times you don't ask, millions of people don't ask for crisis, but it happens. Just keep building. I want more civvies, so we can build more stuff here too. We do need office parks, don't get me wrong, but I have those planned already. What do we got here? More research speed. Uh, 
More research me, please. I like being researched. Hey. So how are we doing with this? High taxes didn't help. Italian upkeep imports. Okay. No, we're not going to that right anyways. Uh, eh, depend on the minds of the youth. I don't, do want to see what happens with the elections once we get enough support for the CDU and whatnot. I mean, it doesn't help that we've been lowering our support anyways. But still. European Union. Uh, party popularity, 40%. That's pretty high. If we get the Linka too, it's not terrible, but not great. Uh -huh. That's fine. Go ahead and research that stuff, too. Because we could do that one, but I want to see what this one does first. Uh, reconcile the parties. I'll we'll do that one next. This one will have new coalitions options after the election, which would be great. More political power, more AFT support. You get more d link support, so the right wing and left wing. So I think we're just going to try to work it out. But we'll see what happens. Massive flood strike the Rhineland. Heavy rain swept across western Germany, hitting the states of the Rhineland Palatinate and North Rhine-Westphalia particularly hard. In addition, the neighboring countries, uh, the Netherlands and Belgium, were also impacted with heavy flooding. Small rivers and streams turned into torrential currents and destroyed entire villages. Dams were under break while electricity and cell phone networks were shut down in what became one of the most region's worst natural catastrophes in recent generations. Oh boy, that's really bad. Many people died and many more lost their homes and belongings. With sinner thoughts and prayers. Increase the popularity of the blank greens. Oh, SPD and AFD. Oh, that's quite bad. Oh, that's really bad. Mass floods start the Rhineland. Oh, I pretty much just read this, though. So. Our condolences to the Germans. To ourselves, of course. So what is the Savior Scraps? You know what? I want to do it, but we can only do one at a time, which kind of sucks. Wow, that's pretty bad, 19. Woo! Okay, so now look at our... We got a monthly change. What happened there? Taxes, of course, went up. Expenses went up. Huh. Social spending, debt payments. It's probably because we have higher taxes. Oh, look at all the stuff we have out here now. Lobby for the party, lobby against the party. Lobby against the party, lobby against them. Daily conservative support. Well, we've already been killing their support anyways. Well, right now, numerically wise, the CDU has the second most. SBD. Popularity and support. Support, very supportive. Uh, greens. The party popularity is only 4%, so that's like nothing. SBD. I kind of want to see what happens, I don't know. I've heard of the FDP party. Massive COVID resurgence in India. India is grappling with a catastrophic resurgence of COVID-19 infections, overwhelming the healthcare system, and leading to an alarming resurgence in death rates. The country wants to help for successful management of the initial wave, as now struggling to contain the virus as it spreads rapidly across its vast population. In recent weeks, India has witnessed an exponential increase in COVID-19 cases, with daily infection rates reaching unprecedented levels. The country recorded a staggering amount of new cases, the highest single-day spike since the pandemic began. The surge puts some immense pressure on the already strained healthcare infrastructure, which is now struggling to cope with the overwhelming number of patients. Hospitals across the nation are operating beyond the capacity, with the reports of severe shortages in beds, oxygen supplies, and essential medications. Pa patients are being turned away due to lack of available resources, leaving many to defend for themselves or rely on makeshift arrangements. The scenes outside hospitals are heart-wrenching, with desperate families scrambling for help and medical personnel working tirelessly to save lives. God help the people of India. You know what? We can lobby against SPD, right? There you go. You're supportive, but whatever. For now. Education, centralized education. Oh, oh, should probably do this one. Look at this one next. Moving on, forty-five billion dollars. We need forty-five billion dollars. Death. Of, oh, this is different. Death of Wall Street. The United States is plunged into a deep crisis, the effects of which are being felt around the world. In recent months, the country is facing an acute political crisis with rising political violence and a sharply polarized society. An intensified wave of coronavirus infection has only exacerbated the situation, causing massive job losses and overburdening the healthcare system. Against this backdrop, living standards have fallen precipitously. The country's economy was paralyzed, imports and exports shall far fell sharply, and uh, prices for essential goods soared. The financial sector was not ready for this development. U.S. banks suddenly imposed restrictions on withdrawal, setting a critical liquidity shortage. This decision caused a wave of panic among the population, which led to a massive sell-off of assets and transfer of savings into cash. The U.S. financial markets collapsed, which immediately affected the economies of the other countries. 
The world economy goes on the verge of collapse, stock indexes are rapidly falling, currencies are depreciating. Political instability in the United States only exacerbates the global crisis, which is already being called one of the worst, uh, most destructive in modern history. The world is on brink of collapse. Well, great. So how badly does this affect us? Consumer gets worse, monthly income goes, oh my god. Okay, we're gonna poop ourselves here. Uh, that's not good. Um, huh. Well, we well, can't wait till the election. Expand the Wilhelmshaven, uh, Wilhelmshaven refineries. Uh, our refineries in Wilhelmshaven are some of the most few domestic oil suppliers we have. It would be wise to prop them up and expand their operations. We need our oil on our own if we're going to march to the defense of Europe. Haitian government overthrown amid social chaos in the aftermath of President Jovenel Moïse's assassination. The shadowy group known as FRG9 has successfully overthrown the Haitian government, installing notorious gang leader Jimmy Cherazier as a new leader of the Caribbean nation. The political vacuum created by Moïse's assassination in July 2021 has led to a rapid decline in public order, with gang violence and widespread protests becoming daily occurrences in Haiti. FRG9, a previously unknown paramilitary organization, emerged from this chaos promising stability and protection for the Haitian people. In a swift and coordinated operation, FRG9 seized control of key government buildings, the National Police Headquarters, and the Presidential Palace, and Port au Prince. With minimal resistance from the demoralized security forces, this group also secured control of major roads, airports, and communication infrastructure, effectively taking control of the country. Jimmy Chazier, a former police officer turned gang leader, is now self proclaimed president of Haiti, addressed the nation in a televised speech. He claims the government's failure to address a deteriorating security situation and pervasive corruption needs necessitated the coup. Shazia promised to restore order and rebuild the nation, calling on citizens to support his leadership. The port is now is more than just a prince. So we minimum wage, we can. For now, might give us a little more pub public trust, maybe. We'll see. A little more support from the SPD. Um, but, weekly stability went below 50%. We get more weekly stability. Personal expenses go up. Oh boy. Monthly poverty development gets better. So we'll see what happens. Also, we're crapping the bed right now really bad. We have, we're losing so much money. It's not funny. Oh boy. Um, we might just do this one now. Next. Flat Russian businesses. Group relations. Trade of interest rate factors. We'll deal with Visegrad. Balkan diplomacy. Trade with Balkan nations. Caucasian diplomacy. I mean, what am I trading? Uh, but there's other things to do here, too. This is really bad. This is really, 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 really bad. Um, interest rates will go up. Well, inflation will go down. Interest rates. I don't know, but when interest rates will go up. Monthly change. Negative 50 billion every month. Wow. Interest rates 2.7. I don't, we, that's going to balloon like crazy. It'll help our inflation. But. Worldwide financial crisis. It'll be removed by next year. I wish I could turn back time because now the guilt is all mine. Can't live without the trust from those you love. I know we can't forget the past. You can't forget love and pride because of that. It's killing me inside. Oh, God. Hello. Oh, there must be a. Civil War or something. Something I haven't seen yet, so. It's making the game lag super hard, and... Oh, look at America! Holy shnikes. And this is why I wanted to play this first, to see what it's like. Um, crackdown in Denver. Rally the Patriots. Right. Um, who in the heck do we have here? Union of America. Uh, Just saying, I kind of... Doubt that Indiana, maybe even parts of Ohio and parts of Kentucky. I'm not sure if these people would all stay together with here, but Southern Federal Command, Roy Cooper, huh? State of South Carolina, uh, Brian Camp, Army of God, Arm, huh? We shall gather at the river. Who in the heck? Loyal White Army. Oh, oh hello. Oh, Triple K, Chris. Miguel Diaz, a Mafia State, Mass Looting, Emperor of Vice. Uh, Ronnie DeSantis. We have Big John. Brandon Russell. Heralds of the Apocalypse. Then there's Miami. La, Ra La Raza. That's funny. Empire of Vice. What else we got around here? Oh, you got small little things like here, too. Redneck Revolt. People's Congress. Democratic Socialism. 
What do we got around here? John J. Johnson. Dreams of a New Africa. Two militias, one army. We got here in Alabama. Alabama's up by K. Ivy. State of Mississippi, led by Tate Reeves. Louisiana, League of the South. Uh, Confederal system, of course, that'd be Arkansas, Spirit of the South. Oh, Trump is them. Texas is divided. Greg Abbott, that's pretty normal. We have Steve, some guy, executive dictatorship. Houston. Edward Ravello Barrio, Azteca. Interesting. City of New Mexico, Southwest Border Command. Tim Foley, Navajo Nation, of course, they like to be independent. State of Arizona. Uh, Doug Ducey, huh? Ejercito de Liberación Chicano. Oh, God. California's a joint mess. Gavin Newsom's here, of course. Um, hmm. Mafia State. People I don't know. Democratic Socialism, Drug Trade. Uh, what is this? Black Gorilla Family. California State Militia. Ultra Conservatism. Berkeley Riots. Who got in Oregon? Uh, Kate Brown. We got. Oh, look at this guy. High Chapel, huh? State of Washington. Jay Inslee. Cascading Provisional Republic. Unstable Alliance. Wow. Western Military Administration. Uh, Brigham's Army, of course, a bunch of Mormons here. Divided Mormons. Western Military Administration. Wow. Oh, how's Michigan? State of Michigan. You don't have a lot of control of Michigan. No, you don't even have Detroit. Highwaymen. Bert Colucci. Who are these people? And then, huh. Oh, and we have, I don't forget, New England. The Jewish Defense League. Of course, the Jews are here. Ethno-nationalism. Second promised land. Andrew Cuomo. There's the Empire. Uh, Connecticut. Thomas Rousseau. American fascist. Are they fascists in New England? I thought they were liberals. I don't know. Second continent to army. Got Long Island doing its thing. Lala City is pretty normal. Western Massachusetts. Massachusetts would be centrist, huh? Greenmont Anarchist Collective. That sounds like Vermont and New England. Yeah, New Hampshire-ish area. Yeah, look at the smelly guy. And we got Maine. Maine just exists. All right. North Sea Oil exp ex uh Expeditions. The North Sea and the Baltic Sea have been both the subject of speculation. The Polish struck oil in the Baltic some years ago. Let's try our hand in the North Sea to see if we can't open up a new source of oil for ourselves in Europe. Oh, there's these guys here too. Are you the same group? Oh, I guess you are. Huh. I get more poverty popularity. So do we explode? Oh, happy September first. So we're exploding too. Oh, they're just killing each other. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, just from what I see. Wow, it's a lot. Oh, I guess Florida is killing itself. But that's pretty normal. Wait, hold on. Hello, did I miss you? Well, I didn't really what you were. Yeah, I just don't know. I mean, that's pretty hard to do. I mean, no, I guess it's a different mod. The fire rises. Knowing I mean, that's a pretty red state. That was really red last election. This was pretty red. This is mostly red, I thought. Yeah, this is blue. At least in the 2020 election. Congress defeats diplomacy. Okay. And perhaps what we'll be seeing as the most tragic event of the 21st century. The two governments in Denver and Washington, D.C. have refused to engage in diplomatic talks in order to reach a peaceful conclusion to the crisis that has shaken the United States after weeks of unsuccessful negotiations. Both Biden and Trump respectively announced that they were the legitimate leader of the country. Sporadic fighting between militias broken out along the temporary ceasefire line across the Illinois and Indiana border. Fire could be seen rising from the high rises of Chicago as Trump's militia fire round after round in an attempt to capture the border city as Biden militias advance into the town of Danville, Illinois. And Denver reports have cited how unmarked back bands have been taking anti war activists off the streets, while pro Trump protests in the suburbs of Louisville have been forcibly dispersed by the federal army. While the Trump government has had significant difficulty maintaining order in the liberal cities, with riots still breaking out, Biden's de facto control does not extend outside the highways and cities, with underground militia having already begun arming themselves and ambushing army convoys. And households across the United States 
Families watching war as a very fabric of American society torn apart. As brother arms himself against brother, it is undeniable that the Second American Civil War has truly begun. Brothers against brothers once more. Many declarations pop up appear. Please hold and enter to close them rapidly. Look at that. If destruction be our lot, we must ourselves be its author and finisher. As a nation of free men, we must live through all time or die by suicide. Texas National Movement. Who's this? Texas Nationals with Nate Smith. Republican filibuster. Who are you? Yellow Rose? Fight for independence. There's Greg all the We'll see what happens. I'm kind of pulling for the League of the South, but. Nartinus. Oh, there's MS 13. American refugees arrive. Amidst political turmoil and social unrest in the United States, a group of American refugees have arrived in Germany seeking safety and a fresh start. They have left their homes and families behind, fleeing the chaos and violence that had engulfed the country. The refugees were greeted with open arms by the German people, who sympathized with their plight and understood the importance of providing a safe haven for those in need. They were provided with temporary shelter and assistance in finding jobs and establishing themselves in new surroundings. Bake them, or tell them to make themselves comfortable. Wow, California's a giant mess. What do you expect? Trudeau exec invokes the Emergencies Act. As of today, the 44th Parliament of Canada, in conjunction with the previous concerns in regards to ongoing warfare in America and igniting of hellfire, especially close in proximity with Ontario, has every minister for a, of a emergency preparedness. Harjit Sajan to gain the ratification of his proposal to inst instigate the imposing of the Emergencies Act signed in 1988. With parliamentary approval and the consent of the bureaucratic means of this cabinet, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Pierre James Trudeau officially signed the extraordinary statute as of now, with having a 30-day time period in the law, yet can easily be adjusted due to the circumstances and the approval among the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. As a result, on the ground, media coverage is reported that Canadian personnel, knowing the separate circumstances, have deployed all across Canada's integral territory boundaries, especially in the town of St. Lawrence River and the Great Lakes, alongside increased reports of reconnaissance operations across the border. Interesting. Support orphans. Huh. With the United States in utter disarray, we have been seemingly left to fend for ourselves. But fret not, as our alliance shall continue to grow and prosper in this new age of uncertain age. United Nations Secures Miami. UN is doing something? Oh, look at this. United Nations Mission in Southern Florida. Social Liberals. Harsh rules of engagement. Oh, the Rednecks have defeated South Carolina. Well then. I'm not sure if England would actually split like this, but whatever. Buffalo Anarchist Commune? Oh, there's Antifa. Kind of figure where they'd be going. Don't get, don't worry about us, we're just digging for oil. Increase the rev oil supply. Invest in synthetic oils. I kind of like that one. Rethink free trade. Ensure domestic stability. Well, we don't have any other crash right now. I don't worry about militarism. Kind of see, want to see what happens with this one. Putin's Verstehle. Let's see. It's getting worse every month. Not good. Feature of NATO. And the Varietat Concordia. Oh, look at this. On the 26th of September, the first rounds of federal elections have begun to elect the members of the 20th Bundestag. State elections in Berlin are also being held, with it being a pivotal election season in Germany. Angela Merkel, chance since 2005, has chosen not to run again, sending the German political sphere into a frenzy. In her place, the CDU has nominated Armin Laschet for Chancellor, while the SPD nominating Olaf Scholz, who was Vice Chancellor in the 4th Merkel Cabinet. This election is a turning point in German politics, with the SDP poised to take the reins from the CDU, SC, CSU, and chaos. Other parties such as Greens, FTP, AFD, and Die Linke have nominated the candidates, and as the ballot boxes are filled, the winner is clear to announce to the world that future Germany is a sovereign Germany. Remove German agenda, anti extremism. Remove government agenda, uh, advocacy. Add government agenda, national st stabilization. When 85% or more stability, public trust goes up by point two. Oh boy. Anti welfare, when below moderate welfare benefits. Below that, or below public trust goes down by point two. Avoid, get rid of Merkel Reich, AFD becomes electors. Set to 0% on public trust. We get Tino Trupala, the return Democrat. Oh, oh, look at that. We changed, did we change your flag? Oh, you're still here. 
Make new focuses? Oh, the two alternated for Germany. Oh, that's cool. Daily change. Oh, well, crap. We must brave the storm for the German stock market crash. I thought it was bad before, man. Oh, the public trust is here. So if we have no trust, what happens? We lose political power, stability, war sport. Uh, what do you have? If you have high trust. Oh. Huh. Entire some masses. Weekly power, power, power exchange. Low taxation. Unify the government. Unity government. Well, you get a building slot. Weekly power, balance change. Expense power. I guess we'll go with this one. Serbian base Kosovo. Oh. Shocking news is arrived out of the Balkans today. As now a state of war exists between Serbia and the internationally unrecognized state of Kosovo. As Serbian armor mechanized infantry cross the border, the government in Belgrade has released a single statement declaring that Serbia is bringing back a rightful part of the country back into a rightful place. The Kosovo government has issued a plea for NATO assistance along with decrying the invasion as illegal and unjust. So far, the Serbian government has rejected demands from both Kosovo and Western politicians to cease the operation. International observers speculate whether NATO will get involved in a similar way as they did in the 90s. Regardless, it seems the war once again returns to Europe's most troubled spot. The powder keg is once again exploded. Ah, Serbia's just going in. They're going heck to town on Kosovo. Right wing populism versus right wing populism. How can we profit off this? Serbian minority tensions are very high. Lack, partial lack of recognition. Backwater of the Balkans. Pawn of NATO. Canada leaves NATO. Pfft, wow. Shocking news is right emerged from Canada today. Um, and surprising announcement, Prime Minister Ju Justin Trudeau has uh, declared that Canada will be withdrawn from the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. See how the Canada cannot uphold its defense promises and stress that the decision, though difficult, was unavoidable given the nation's current situation. However, Trudeau assured that Canada may consider rejoining the alliance once stability is restored across the North American continent. Oh, look at these guys here. Oh, look at the UK's here too. Oh, the American Constitutional Government now. Oh, look at that flag. Many experts and former officials are attributing this unprecedented move to the overwhelming influx of American refugees fleeing the escalating civil conflict in the United States. The sudden surge of displaced people has placed immense strain on Canada's resources, forcing the government to dramatically shift its budget to address the mounting humanitarian crisis. Funds that would have been used to meet defense obligations under NATO were diverted towards managing the refugee crisis and stabilizing the nation's internal affairs. This redirection of resources likely resulted in Canada being unable to meet NATO's minimum defense spending requirements, ultimately leading to its withdrawal. Oh, look at all this stuff here. Uh, uncertainty now surrounds Canada's future with NATO. While some remain hopeful that the country may rejoin once its internal issues are resolved, others are more skeptical. However, with tensions rising along the increasingly unstable border with the former United States, there are growing concerns that armed conflict could spill into Canada. In that case, some speculate that NATO might intervene and provide some assistance, even with Canada no longer a formal member of the alliance. The purpose of the Second American Civil War grow. Uncooperative military. Inefficient economy. Maintained liberties. Huh. Low corporate influence. Air Force domination, oil crisis, a battle for America, a quality civilian unrest. If stability is twenty percent or less, an anti-government uprising will occur. Congress of the Union. So what do you have on this side then? Argumentative army. Wow, they're really focused on defense. Really bad organization, attack and defense. Really bad attack. Rural economy, moderate militia loyalty. Dilapidated deep state. No compliance gain. Oh, God. Second Mil Amendment. Oil crisis. Military disorganization. Bad. Patriotic defense. And Constitutional Congress. Wow. Hell's Angels, huh? Well, do we like them? No. I don't want to get involved. Using the coalition. Now elections are done, we have a short time for an informal government. Let's consider our options carefully to make sure we're not in the minority in the Bundestag. So, what do we have? 40% popularity. We don't need any help. The conservatives will join the coalition. CDU will support us. 45%. Indifferent here. Aversive, introversive. There you go. So now our support is 51%. 
possible Atombaffen cell in Germany. The Second American Civil War has recently begun and already its effects felt throughout the world. As the United States burns, we've received troubling reports of an Atombaffen division in our own cell in our homeland. Atombaffen. Atombaffen is a neo-Nazi group dedicated to accelerate the total collapse of civilization and they have been extremely active in the American state of Florida. However, we are already aware of it having ties with other countries globally such as Russia, the UK, and Baltics. Lately, we have our suspicions that the cell in question is gathering volunteers and equipment to send to America, assisting the extremists there and causing more suffering. We ensure that city I will be kept in them, and that all equipment and volunteers sent will not be able to leave Germany at all. Terrorism should not have fertile ground, ground to grow on. Investigate the matter. So we have 40%, which is not bit terrible. And this hopped out a little bit here. Exports are better. Expenses got pretty bad. I guess close to what you expect. So when do you leave? Uh, Polis Belarusian border crisis. Uh oh. The border states of uh, Latvia, Estonia, and Lithuania were the brunt of Russian aggression throughout the ages and in the recent war. Thousands of young men dead, the countryside has scourged in a little, way, uh, little in the way of gain for these nations materially, as has led to radicalization among the country's dissatisfied youth and veterans. This dissatisfaction with the post war status quo has been blamed on the country's sizable Russian minorities and the many new ultra nationalist groups forming in the aftermath of the war began harassing them. The government has largely turned a blind eye toward these recent actions, with many government officials sadly praising them. One liberal member of parliament for Estonia argued that any injustice is being experienced by Russians in Estonia pale in comparison to that inflicted on her people by the Russian imperialists, Soviets, and Putinists. A Latvian mayor declared that young men of our nation have a right to enforce their borders and punish collaborators when informed of anti Russian attacks in the city. The most serious attacks on ethnic Russians this last weekend has resulted in eight deaths and over 50 injured, and the problem only seems to be getting worse. Local leaders for the Russian minority in these nations have argued that these acts of discrimination are illogical and go against pluralist principles. They point to ethnic Russian servants in the Baltic militarism, and refusal to collaborate with the Russian forces in many instances as evidence that they are just good as citizens of any neighbors, or as of their neighbors. The Russian minorities called in Berlin to aid them and put pressure on the Baltic governments to end injustice and enforce administering of democratic rights for them. Open immediate negotiations, negotiations with Belarus and Russia. They won't tolerate acts of terrorism. Yeah, we'll go with that one. Why not? Let's make it spicy. Medium trust. I don't mind getting high trust. We're going to need a lot of political power for that. Call for European unity. I guess we could have done this on two still, but. Hmm. Invest in defense contractors. I guess we could have gotten that way technically too. We're thinking German militarism. I mean, that would help. I don't know if I'm actually doing the right way or not, but we'll see. Oh, there goes Arizona. Bye, Arizona. It'll be removed next year. Battle of Los Angeles. The declaration of various militias and criminal organizations openly define the territory has caused utter turmoil and anarchy in, in Canada, or Canada, California. Through the midst of the chaos, the remnants Reminiscence of the California National Guard has begun taking measures to retake the city of Los Angeles. The decision is radical to retake the largest metropolitan area while what remains of the state government is stretched as far as possible. Sounds about right. The Alabama is Kabul. Uh, they're different. We don't need them. Very aversive. Whatever. Different. Supportive. Well, we have we have quite a bit of support. We could always use more. Delinka popularity is quite a bit. Can I negotiate support for Delinka? Popularity is very high. Lobby against them. We can lower their popularity barely. We can, but by doing that, we lower their support. But we are taking a political action right now. Support orphans. Lobby for them. We can lobby against them and just really lower their effects. The Taliban swept in Afghanistan's capital today after the government collapsed and the battle president joined an exodus of his fellow citizens of foreigners, signaling the end of a costly two decade U.S. campaign to retake the country. Heavily armed Taliban fighters fanned out across the capital and stood up under Kabul's abandoned presidential palace. Suhail Shaheen, 
A Taliban spokesperson negotiator told the Associated Press that the militants would hold talks in the coming days aimed at forming an open, inclusive Islamic government. As night fell, Taliban fighters deployed across Kabul, taking over abandoned police posts and pledging to maintain law and order during the transition. Residents reported looting the parts of the city, including the upscale diplomatic district, and messages circulated on social media advised people to stay inside and lock their gates. And a sitting rout. The Taliban seized nearly all of Afghanistan in just over a week, despite the billions of dollars spent by the U.S. and NATO in nearly, over tw nearly 20 years to build up Afghan security forces. Just days earlier, an American military estimate estimated that the capital would not come under insurgent pressure for a month. Out with a whimper. We're by the east. Restrict immigration. Moderate regulation. Support Western industry. Let me try that one, yeah. He's a happy person. Calm down, the radicals. All on our own. Oh, it's not in collision. Worst for stability modifier. Oh, there's this one. Germany above all. Well, we, I guess we will restrict immigration if we can, as well as revive the East as best we can, too. California state militia evacuates populations. During the advance of the American People's Liberation Army across California, resistance has varied significantly, from drug cartels and prison gangs to state governments, remnants, and National Guard units. One of the fiercest opponents of the APLA within California has been the California State Militia, which has specifically prioritized destroying the communists at any cost. With the state government losing control of large swaths of lands in Northern California, the militia stepped in as a force to stabilize the region. Recently, after gaining control of the region, the California State Militia decided to evacuate seemingly almost the entire population of California's northwestern coastal city, county of Humboldt during an ongoing offensive by the APLA. The California State Militia claimed that they did so to protect the civilians in the region and deny any allegations of otherwise, but both the APLA and international observers decried the action, declaring it an act of forced deportation uh, and genocide against minorities and left-wingers, as the northwest coast of California's largely left-leaning is home to a high minority population. The APLA even went so far to suggest that the CSM has supported the population to extermination camps deep in the Sierra Nevada, although evidence for this is lacking. Regardless of the exact details, the event assured a lead to greater levels of political and ethnic violence throughout California and the West Coast region as a whole, as leftist militias may seek to avenge the incident by targeting right-wing civilian populations with similar acts. Ah, oh, I love America. What is this, state of California? And also, we have near elections begin, so... Um, oh, here they are. Scott Witt, huh? Well, American People's Liberation Army, APLA. Uh, what do we got going on? We got the depression recovery going on right now. Because we are depressed. And we're trying to not be depressed. What else we got here? Increase the oil reserve, we'll probably do that. Um, we got quite a few comments to go through, too. Uh, it's kind of interesting reading all your comments, because there's a lot of content apparently here, too. Um, right now, we're doing pretty badly for the debt. Now it's gone down to negative 45 billion. Not great, but it's not bad. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of options for us in total. The end of ASCN. Following the collapse of the United States, which left a deep mark on the geo global political arena, the Association of Southeast Na Asian Nations faced internal conflicts and divisions. Many members of the organization began to move in different directions and were still leaning toward closer cooperation with the growing influence of China and others seeking support from Japan. ASCAN's economic and political relevance plummeted, and the organization's ability to shape regional policy came into question. With increasing polarization and declining influence on the global economy, ASCAN leaders decided to formally dissolve it, marking the end of one of the most important organizations in Asia. So some comments include, if Russia goes communist, you get the German junta. If Russia goes nationalist, you get the communists. If Russia goes autocratic, you get the EU's path for Germany. Um, so it says there's another war after the first European war. And it's, they recommend that I continue to go through that, even though we might lose. Um, so it says if you follow the EU route, try to fail the war with Russia first. It allows you to unify Europe faster. Huh. Uh, there's a German... Uh, let's see. The pro-EU route looks the most interesting. Um, let's see. Please play as the SPD sometime. Someone says, eventually you do go to war with Russia, but don't restart or mess around with the console if you start to lose. Germany has a ton of content if you lose the war. And at least a second war with Russia. Uh, let's see. The fire rises looks like very interesting, but I have no idea what Germany can get up to, and the economy and mechanics are a bit confusing. But I'll watch your series with great interest to see what you end up. So thank you for watching. Oh, Balkan countries lead NATO. Um, so, let's see. Someone else says, it's kind of crazy. Uh, the fire rises mod is just crazy overall. Someone says, yeah, can you do an SPD route? Or at least do a Union of America route. But, uh, yeah. Um, someone else asks, United in the EU will probably be OP. I do want to try out United the, uh, the EU sometime. Or, you know, federalize and whatnot. So. Uh, Balkan country league. Following anti-Western protests in Montenegro and Macedonia, both countries have triggered the Article 13 of NATO, officially filing note notices of denunciation to the NATO headquarters in Belgium. 
Many international experts have indicated that this has dramatically shifted the balance of power within the Balkans, with the Russian alliance Serbia getting a significant boost in power projection within the region. The power vacuum caused by the collapse of the United States and the socio-economic chaos in the EU, the stability, stability so carefully preserved since the collapse of Yugoslavia, seems to stand on a knife's edge. Interesting. Yeah, we're trying to get rid of this, and trying to get rid of economic downturn. It's going to take a lot of time to get rid of all that. Awful NATO unity. Oh, that's great. Oh, oh yeah, so we got that mission too. Um, federalization, woo! German political sphere. Party popularity is pretty good, actually, right now. We've got uh, CDU is pretty popular, too. Support orphans. What have orphans done for us? Placate NATO. Has 10% influence points. Do, do we care? Uh, well, maybe we could invest in it, I guess. Home front warfare. Well... Netanyahu declares national emergency. Disturbing news is coming from Israel. The current Prime Minister Netanyahu has declared a national emergency due to the ongoing crisis around the world in his recent speech. Forgot about this country. Uh, their leader, a state that is just surrounded by enemies, only wishing harm for the Jewish people. That's pretty normal. He also announced the creation of a large unity government, including parties with similar views. Additionally, he has hinted at the intention to start a major state reform that would change the government structure and eliminate unnecessary positions within the system. In the weeks leading up to their declaration, Netanyahu declared increased the budget for the IF, IDF and Mossad. Typical. Uh, what else we got? Opposition parties and uh, pro-Arab groups have criticized Netanyahu's actions as a state coup and blame authoritarianism. Many politicians have already declared the support for either the government or the opposition. The situation in the Middle East is getting any tenacity by the day. A daring power grab amid the global chaos. All right, who's winning here? Oh, Florida's beat MS-13. Poverty develops. Development decreases. Ooh, we must fix this. Well, looks like a giant freaking mess. Oh. Wholesale sector bailout. The National Socialist Movement has the Black Mafia family. Wow. Oh, these guys are killing each other. Ew. Wholesale sector bailout. Amid the ongoing COVID 19 pandemic, the German government has announced a substantial financial aid package to support the country's struggling wholesale sector. As businesses across various industries face significant economic challenges due to the global health crisis, this move aims to provide much needed relief and to help sustain the sector during this challenging period. The bailout package, with several billion euros, will be allocated to wholesalers in various industries, including food, textiles, and pharmaceuticals. The funding aims to help these businesses maintain their workforce, continue operations, and meet financial obligations despite the reduced demand and disrupt, disrupt the supply chains caused by the pandemic. Bottom part of the economy. They have to struggle like the rest of us. I want to see what happens when they have to struggle like the rest of us. Romanized Burgergeld. Alright, that's looking better. Strengthen pro-union laws. Uh, this form is Bürgergeld. I have a feeling we should probably also be doing a lot of this stuff over here. We're thinking German militarism. American People's Liberation Army has defeated the California State Militia. AFD endorses Max Ott for president. Alternative for Deutschland has officially endorsed Max Ott. Uh, as a candidate for the presidency. Ott, uh, uh, marking a significant moment in German politics, Ott, a conservative economist with a history of controversial statements and affiliations, has long been seen as a capable figure of bridging the gap between the mainstream right and the far right. His nomination by the AFD signals a party's desire to present a candidate with an intellectual credibility and economic expertise, hoping to broaden their appeal beyond the populist base, however. Ott's previous ties to the CDU and his stance on key issues have stirred debate within the party, with some members questioning whether he truly represents the AFD's core. This endorsement is already causing waves across Germany's political landscape. All its candidacy is expected to intensify that polarization within the country, as established political factions on the left and center right denounce AFD's decision. For the AFD, however, this is a calculated gamble, an opportunity to legitimize their movement in the eyes of voters who might otherwise reject their populist rhetoric. Germany now awaits a coming presidential race, knowing that Ott's candidacy could redefine the political future of the nation, like they'd ever win. Okay, we'll go with it. Why not? But as industry, that wouldn't be bad to do either right now, but still. Because right now, this is looking real bad. Look at that inflation. Oh, my goodness. Really bad. Social spending is so bad, too. Yeah, well, there goes the economy. Financial sector bailout. In response to the economic turmoil caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, the German government has unveiled a substantial... Did you read this? Uh, financial aid package aimed at supporting the country's financial sector. As banks and financial institutions face mounting challenges due to the global health crisis, this bail intends to provide much-needed assistance and maintain stability within the sector. The multi-billion uh, euro package 
will be distributed to various financial institutions, including banks, insurance companies, and investment firms. The funding aims to ensure the continued functioning of these institutions despite the economic downturn and safeguard the country's financial system. The German government recognizes the critical role that the financial sector plays in maintaining economic stability and facilitating growth. By providing this financial support, the government hopes to mitigate the long-term effects of the COVID-19 crisis on the economy and contribute to a more rapid recovery once the pandemic subsides. Uh, subsides. As part of the bailout agreement, financial institutions will be required to adhere to strict conditions, including increased financial transparency, strengthen capital requirements, and a commitment to responsible lending practices. This move is in line with the German government's broader goals of promoting financial stability and responsible business practices in the face of ongoing economic uncertainty. They have to struggle like the rest of us. I like this one. Mm, financial sector bailout. Do we bail out anybody? We could say no. I mean, we could always bail them out later on. Uh, you know, when we do the EU route, probably. Because we're not done with all this stuff. But do, maybe, maybe not. Oh, yeah, we got to do all this stuff, too. Yeah, we probably need this one as well. Restricted immigration. That'll keep us popular. Uh-huh. For most burger guild. Raise welfare payments. Hmm. Honestly, I don't know enough. We are populist nationalists about the AFD. Well, let's, let's read about the AFD, you know? Ultra conservatism, also known as extreme conservatism, represents a more rigid, uncompromising form of conservatism. Ultra conservatives tend to resist or reject social change and reform, and often seek to return to what they perceive as a pure or idealized past. They're often extremely critical of modernization, progressive social movements, and changes in the traditional societal norms. Ultra-conservatives often advocate strict interpretation and application of religious, cultural, moral values. They may also oppose government intervention in social and economic affairs, and advocate for the minimization of government involvement. So they oppose government intervention in social and economic affairs. Ultra-conservatives may also oppose international cooperation and deals, prioritizing national sovereignty instead. I like this one, but they're going to struggle like the rest of us. Party popular support. Oh, when selected, you lose 10% support. Wow, that's pretty bad. Uh, unified unity government. Anti welfare, huh? Ah, the bloods are gone. Who is California killed off the bloods? Looks like the APLA is doing quite well, though. New Aryan nations. Well, huh. Texas is a mess. Southern Federal Command, huh? Isn't like Joe Biden like attacking Trump a lot, like really badly? No, oh, defenders of democracy got a lot of attack. Congress of the Union. How about you guys? Con American Constitutional Army. You have a lot worse attack. Ooh. What you looked at earlier? Desperate measures. Yeah, desperate measures call for desperate times. Battle Command of Texas is down. That's good. State of Texas. Texas National Movement. Placate NATO. Mm -hmm. Oh, what do we got here? Lab against party. Negotiate support. Lab against party. Raise welfare payments. Well, we're anti-welfare, aren't we? Support orphans. We don't care about the orphans. Bail out citizens. Formalized Bürger Guild. Well, let's see. Popularity of AFD and D-Link could go down. Hmm. Depression. Hmm. I don't want them with the inflation. I like this one, though. But we're like anti-welfare. I don't mind that one. Is there anything else we could really do here that would help us out? Because we have excellent worker rights. We've got good state pensions. Near zero interest rates. We have extreme taxes, unfortunately, for these people, but whatever. A civilian economy. Weekly business. Percentage room below. You get more consumer goods, technically. How much are we building? We're building okay amount. I wish I knew how much money we we're making from the civvies. Monthly change. Oh, look at that. It went back up. Expenses 93 billion, income is 105 billion. What happened? Because of our taxes, I guess. Want the income growth? I'm still learning how this all works, so. Um, but do you have ideas how, to, how it works? Please let me know in the comments below. I wouldn't mind helping out the army, but the army is going to be the most important thing. Moderate income. Oh, yeah, that's what we can do there. Open borders? I don't want open borders. I don't mind going to maybe moderate regulation because I want to get some more political power as we keep going forward. It seems like with our route, we'll probably want to go high regulation, if not cl closed borders. Um, but with all the crises going on, I don't want to do this one. So we're not doing that one. Uh, where's your support? 41%. That's pretty good. 
Um, they're adverse to us. We probably want to put down them, but we already did that here. Party popularity is... Everything else is okay. Everything else is okay for now. For that, at least. I'm not doing this one. Centralized education, I want to do. Raise welfare payments. I do like getting more public trust. It doesn't make sense for us to do so. We do get some more consumer goods factors, so... We do what we must where we must. A oh, common agricultural policy. And we did do this one because we did need all the extra policy. Empower the Chancellor. Oh, we can ban parties. Holy crap. Uh, the Chancellor acts in a time of strife and great political challenges. By issuing emergency powers, we can better tactical, tackle the issues for Germany and Europe. So, empower him and ban other people's parties. That sounds awesome. Requires one of the following. And you can still do this one, right? As modify our Bundeswehr. Unify our goals. And we'd be at war for this one. Uh, political power. Party popularity stability modifier. And more political power. How about ugh, immigration? Yeah, we're going to immigration next. In times of social strife, we must take advantage of it. Battle of Boston. Patriot Front ground parts to confirm the city of Boston's falling under the control of... Oh, okay. Who's Patriot Front? Who are you? Oh. Vucic consolidate Serbia. Oh, you're... Ethno-nationalist. Jews. Okay. Uh, the recent snap elections within Serbia have provoked great upset as incumbent Alexander Vucic and Serbian Progressive Party has secured a win and consulted significant power in the country. The recent political and social peoples rocking Europe and America along with various uh, domestic upheavals within the last few months have driven Serbian voters towards candidates and parties promising order and stability. Vucic and the dominant SNS party have successfully utilized such sentiments, appealing in their campaigns with promises of peace, order, stability, and a sense of security. The strident true electoral strategies once again carried Vucic and his party to unchallenged success in the aftermath of these elections. With the newfound dominance within the Serbian government, Vucic and his colleagues have also moved forward with their new domestic security laws and regulations cracking down on certain political parties and activist groups. These new changes are cited by Vucic as a necessary step for Serbia in a world dominated by extremism, violence, and war. Already, many pro-Western NGOs and opposition activists have decried the recent win and other actions by the new government as autocratic and illegal. These calls have so far been ignored, as the government still intends to move forward with its new security and political reforms. It seems that the peace and stability have returned to Serbia. Modern Serbia for modern times. Chicano the Russians defeated the Southwest Border Command. Oh, crap, that's not good. 2022 presidential election. A 2022... German presidential elections emerged as a pivotal moment in the country's political landscape, featuring three candidates with starkly contrasting views for the future. Incumbent Frank Walter Steinmeier is seeking re election with broad support from centrist and mainstream parties, including the SPD, CDU, and the Greens. Known for his steady leadership and commitment to European unity, Steinmeier emphasizes the importance of maintaining dem democratic values and fostering consensus amid increasing domestic and international challenges. His campaign aims to reassure voters that stability is paramount during these turbulent times. Challenging him is Max Ott, the controversial candidate endorsed by the Alternative for Deutschland. Ott positions himself as a nationalist voice critical of the current administration, appealing to those frustrated with immigration policies and economic management. Meanwhile, Gerhard Trabert, a physician backed by Die Linke, focuses on social justice and poverty reduction, advocating for the country's most vulnerable populations. With the election approaching, Germany stands at a crossroads as the outcome will not only determine its next president, but also reflect the deeper ideological divides within the nation, between call for stability, radical change, and pursuit of social equity. Max Ott. Control decentralization. Sure. Automotive sector bailout. I want to. How much trust do we have? Battle for New York. Victor forces clear Manhattan of snipers. While propaganda agents flood Brooklyn with hand supply handouts. No doubt the finest Joan Thomas Rousseau's rapidly expanding treasury in New York has been completely subjugated by fascism. Hot. Remaining resistance is for and Skloeric. Skloeric. With little cooperation between the police holdouts, federal agents, and leftists, this has not prevented the death of many occupiers and their newfound collaborators. Damage of the city. As most acute in the outlying regions, however, there are still signs of war even in the wealthy areas. The city has rapidly lost population with thousands of civilians fleeing into the Unionist New Jersey or west and north further into the arms of the Patriot Front. The new regime has been surprisingly willing to allow the city to empty, establishing numerous refugee corridors, not out of the goodness of their heart. The city is vast and dense. It will take months before it's subdued, less people, less time. The Big Apple Falls. So what do we got here? Okay. Utilize party support. Nope. Low taxation. Hmm. 
Vladimir, what? Vladimir Putin is dead. Okay. I haven't been out of the spotlight since diagnosed with COVID-19 virus. Russian state news has been propagating, uh, propping the narrative that Putin was in great shape and had been on the road to recovery. This morning, however, those hopes were dashed with the Kremlin announcing that Putin, the architect of modern Russia, has come to the illness, passing away at 4.36 in the morning, Moscow time. The news has spread like wildfire with the Russians across the Federation, giving the condolences to the late leader. While the widely regarded as autocrat despot of the West, Russians at large had venerated him to an almost godlike position, a state-sanctioned national week of mourning being announced with Medvedev, Medvedev stating the death of his mentor and longtime friend as having stabbed me in the heart like a dagger, as any Russian with a soul would feel. As many mourn throughout the Federation, uncertainty also is gripped it. Though Medvedev is poised to succeed Putin, it remains to see if United Russia, with its history of rigging the electoral process to its favor, can remain the dominating party that has without its cherished godfather at the helm, with many suspecting to them to lose in the next presidential election. Interesting development. Oh, here's Max. He's an economic populist. Oh, we can build faster. Okay. Party popularity. Yes. It also upset that we're in power, too. Their money's getting better. Picture friends feed with the Green Mountain Company. All right, what? Okay. I hope this helps our debt. Debt to GDP ratio, of course. Liquidity is not bad. Helps it are a little bit. I hate inflation. Monthly inflation goes up. <sighs> Even in real life, inflation sucks, man. It really just eats at us. Resource efficiency gain. Oh, we can do that one. Oh, what do we got here? Lobby for party. Might as well. Blackgate NATO? Sure. Vitalized industry. Sure. How much political power do we get? Almost one a day. Okay. Well, we got to end this episode with at least restricting immigration, right? So we get lower re regulation with moderate regulation. We get uh, more political power overall. A lot more, actually. <sighs> All on our own. Current ruling party is authoritarian Democrat and is not in coalition with the conservatives. Are we not? Well, let's remember it's conservative. We could go all on our own. War penny stability modifier. Calm down the radicals. Oh man, I don't know. You get more political power this way too. I like this one. Calls for European unity. Deal with these guys. Balkan diplomacy. Oh, we need more world attention. Or we'd be at war. Huh. Because this is not exclusive with the unifier goals. 66.6. .6. That's a lot. Oh, you get so much more political power, too. I like that. Tackle corporations. We get more political power here. Oh, we get this one, too. The green alternative. The greens get more support. We could still go this route. The green alternative. Let's take the moral prerogative and solve two issues at once. By expanding wind farms and solar fields throughout Germany, we'll keep the environment clean while expanding our brilliant domestic energy resources. Brilliant. Is that? I don't think that's something that the AFD would really care about too much. I could be wrong. Like, oh, I'm not from Germany and whatnot, but, you know, that's no excuse. That looks really good. It seems like we'd rather go down this route, rethink free trade um, overall. There's so many things I want to do. It looks so good. Less green support. Every man counts. You lose political power. But this could really help. Nuclear reactor construction speed, which I don't like. Power plant. But I like this decision. You can just straight up ban parties. Oh, that sounds like fun. You get more political power too. You can do more stuff. You can revive the East as well. Support Western industry, which we do like as well. For 700 days, more local factories, more local construction speed. Get more trust. Revive the East. You get another building slot. Large town, additional base building slots. Not bad. Not super important, but we do need the Bundeswehr as well. And I'm going to probably do this all the stuff over here on the last. Um, a line to the right. Huh. Germany first. What's the difference? A line to the right. Oh, okay. We'll probably do Germany first and go down here. Well, what is this? Common agricultural policy. Get cap. Interesting. I want to empower the Chancellor. He acts in time to strive in great political challenges by issuing emergency powers. We can better tackle issues coming, incoming from Germany and Europe. Yeah, I want to just empower this guy. So... I think we'll end it there. We're, we're definitely chosen our route. Low taxation. Uh, public trust goes up by 22. Personal tax rate goes down. Ooh. Oh, so without extreme taxes were 25%. We can get more weekly trust if we have less taxes. Um, so and we got more than a poverty pop party popularity. And went up below moderate welfare benefits. 
public trust goes down. Oh. Well, regardless, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. So continue on, see what's going to happen to basically the rest of the world. Thanks for watching, and have a great, great German rest of your day.